Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. This is Black Heart Sign of Black in again asking you to hit the share button even before you hit the like or the subscribe buttons because the message is more important than the messenger and if it wasn't then I would not record it. But look, check this out. In the future I'm probably, um, I say after two days I'm going to have to record a lot less. I'm going to be quite busy. Some of this I'll explain to you. I'll be lucky to record twice a week in the future. A phenomenon has been going on for a long time, but it's only recently that I heard it. And that is so many matriarchal ass niggas coming down on guys who don't understand women and are shocked by them and calling them incels and trying to diminutize them in their points. In the white community, it's their business. In the black community, it's dumb as hell and I'll go ahead and get straight to the point and tell you why it's dumb as hell and really can't be true. There's one black man of which I know that I could suspect of being an incel. Only one. And I'm him. See, most black men ain't incels. Now, most black men can have trouble, but they ain't incels. I mean, even back in the 80s, when... Uh, women were talking about they wanted light-skinned brothers. The fact is that Chocolate Brothers still wasn't by themselves. They didn't remain single the rest of their lives. And they weren't relegated to marrying unattractive women either. So even when sisters were saying, I don't want nobody that black, you'd still see them out with somebody that pale. I mean, you still see them out with someone chocolate. And for the race, that's good. They shouldn't be shut out. <clears throat> but I'm just using this as an example. <clears throat> See, I guess that I was one in the early 90s, and, and I have to say guess because I actually didn't try to prove it. I didn't have, I didn't know the word incel, but um, I guess I was one because I wasn't really trying to get laid since I had trust issues, but I was trying to get treated equally, though to have the same options as uh, other black men in my peer group. And I didn't. At no point in my life um, was I ever treated equally by African-American or even other Western black women in comparison to how they treated and treat other black men. Now I really assumed that women had all of these barriers in their minds to romance, let alone sex, and that it was difficult it was just difficult for them to trust someone enough to do that. <clears throat> so I didn't expect them to trust me because, you know, they wouldn't know me. But therefore, I didn't give that trust that easily myself in the beginning. And nonetheless, I wanted to crack the mystery of why I was being treated so differently and judged so harshly by black girls and later black women in comparison to other black men. So the longer this took place, the worse my trust issues became. So imagine finally being approached sexually by a sister and you realize you're afraid to expose your junk because you fear she wants to hurt you when you do and leave you feeling stupid for showing it to someone you didn't know well. Imagine she puts your, her hands on your junk and your first thought is check her hand to see if she's got a razor in it. That's how I was trained. And I wouldn't want this for any of you, to be honest. Imagine being in your 20s and seeing that conversations between black women and other black men were actually calm. And you then, at that age, start to first wonder why you've been cross-examined so much that you just expected it and thought it was normal. When I think back to it, I don't know of black men who were incel, even though they may have existed. But if there was one, I must have been the closest thing to it as I'm not sure I could have even gotten. I don't know if I could have gotten the draws of a fat or an underage girl because I ran from them like the plague since I didn't want to charge and I didn't want to stalk her. But looking back, I don't know of any black men who got the same treatment as me without being ugly to women or having a social disability of some sort. Usually they were treated worse in the long run over time. Um, whereas I would catch it in the beginning, even without approaching sisters, but it would become more neutral as time went on and to where they wouldn't act like they had a crush, nor would they be hateful, but they'd be neutral and polite. And yes, I'm talking about the ones that were attractive. They didn't have to be nines and tens, but even sevens. Now, I'm about to get married to a non-Ados black woman. 
a non-American black woman, non-Western, and I remember a lot more detail of what I went through before, and I fear I'll need a lot of time to adjust because of what I was shown years back on a consistent basis. However, I can say that the one other time I was married to a non-Western black woman, she treated me well until her government gave her trouble because of their refusal to accept the marriage. It wasn't her fault and it wasn't mine. May Allah curse them and that government and their king, who, by the way, still own slaves, all of whom are black from what I heard and on African soil nonetheless. So back to the point, see, I hope that because of what I learned from um, Edo sisters, African-American sisters, and later from other Western black women while I was younger, I hope that I don't inadvertently hurt the feelings of my future bride, but I don't know the future. What I do know is that I learned harsh lessons and I learned them from Western black women. All they had to do was be a seven, and unless they were inappropriately too young, too big, too stinky, too slow mentally, just anything that would ruin their options with other men, there was nothing, uh, there was no, yeah, there was nothing close to equal about the treatment I got from them. And it was nothing about me that called for them to only seek me out under these conditions, the condition that they had lost options in other men. If they had been, I could have worked on it or not, but I wouldn't be on YouTube risking someone doxing me and exposing whatever the hell it is. I have to work on not only the marriage, but also on my own head and expectations and make sure I don't inadvertently transfer some harm and negativity to her. So I got more work to do in my own brain now, and I won't have time to record as much. And for this, I have... Uh, not the preference of sisters for a different look in a man, but the lying and the covering it up and they're blaming me for them singling me out as they did for worse treatment to thank for this. It's not as simple as, well, they didn't like me, so now I'm hurt. The truth is that they lied or got silent about the reason for which they wouldn't even be as polite when they did want me or when they did not, and never told me why they would make insulting requests of me while offering nothing but a hard time in return. The insults, the false accusations, and the lying were what did it, and frankly, I fear it causing me to accidentally, not intentionally, cause unhappiness to the future bride. This is a waking nightmare fear in this. Already, I didn't tell our male co-workers our plans to tie the knot. Not because I was embarrassed, but because I'm trained to respect women's privacy and let them tell when they want because I'm used to them feeling embarrassed. I find myself thinking about how to shield them from shame if we go out together in public until I remember she's not American and we're not in the U.S. anymore. And in the Arab Gulf, no one's going to stare at us, let alone interrogate her about why she's with a non-black man or a man that's not black enough. I have to remind myself of this at times. I find myself cleaning my unit in which I live extra spotlessly because I expect her to scrutinize every detail when she moves in, looking for something. Then I have to remember, she's not American. It's already clean in here, and she's not looking for a reason to show others that she isn't attached to me as she would be to someone less ambiguous looking. Brothers, I don't want this for you guys. But I have to tell you this. Don't step away from all black women and don't step to the white cave Becky who started this issue between us and sisters, but step away from the Western black woman and do it early in life unless you're just one of those lucky guys that they want and appreciate. If you wait too long and keep trying too long, you'll develop some mechanisms and reactions and expectations that could alarm the other women around the world and signal to them that you're in their nations and their faces only because your own women found something wrong with you. You want the women abroad to know that Western women are the problem. Even if they are good friends to have, and they can be when they choose to, but not for these women abroad to think that these women just found a real problem with you when all they really found is that you're not from Krypton and you can't fly and you're not bulletproof. If they pick up on the signs of trauma, I can't tell you what reaction to expect, to be honest, because non-Westerners have multiple different cultures, and I don't know what's going to happen. Better that I advise you to just skip that stage altogether. This way, you're less likely to wonder if you're an incel or how close you are to being one, even though the definition itself would only apply to extreme cases. And in the black community, probably none. But more importantly, you're also less likely to become one of those matriarchal mandingo-ass niggas calling everyone else an incel because these so-called incels can see what you haven't experienced. And to get back to these matriarchal mandingo bucks, 
you're up here labeling men with a term you don't well understand and you're trying to shoot down a valid point because you don't want to hit it. You got lucky enough to win a rigged game. And it's not wrong to be lucky. But the problem is you'll say to me and to other men that you went through something that made you a man and more manly than before, like maybe the gym or the military or just being around alphas. But you don't understand that even alpha and beta are misused by us. And really the ones we call betas would have been called omegas if we were the four-legged wolves to which these terms were first applied. And Darwinism is something that y'all love to quote, natural selection, survival of the fittest. Why are we applying the same thing to women though? Darwinism was used to categorize our race as partially still ape-like and not fully human. But you want to make it a justification for only one culture of women to start exaggerating normal natural preferences to the extent of jungle animals from, what, from whom we've been so different for over a million years. In other cultures, women want guys that are manly different from women, but they don't insist on only the guys who killed the most, the most people or the most animals. In Brazil, there's an Amazon tribe, and a woman was talking to a camera once and complaining because she wanted to marry a particular man. And see, look, this man wasn't weak. He wasn't strong. He didn't succeed every time he hunted. He didn't fail. He wasn't the head warrior. He wasn't lowest on the pecking order. He wasn't rich, and he wasn't poorer than others. He was a normal man. And if we saw him in downtown L.A. and there was no language barrier, we'd hang out with him easily. And nobody would be walking up trying to pick on this dude either. And she said that she was sick and tired of some of the other women trying to tell her to go after somebody else. She said, he doesn't have to be all of these things. I like him and he knows how to treat me. She wanted him. But there's a chance that they could still get married. Why? Because in her society, these women don't get to pick the men for her. This is a hunter-gatherer society. The same one to which some of you matriarchal mandingos, wannabe mandingos, I should say, love to point to try to convince us that it's natural for women to not know the difference between a man and a brute. You're sitting up here listening to women tell other women to secure the bag by being feminine. But you haven't told these women the cold truth they need to hear, and you are busy telling men what we already know. You tell us women like money and muscles as if we don't know that. But you also know that both have a cost. Neither is free, and the minimum cost for either one is time. But they also cost each other. See, money costs muscles, and muscles cost money, and both cost time. Women know this too. But they won't ignore it and just insist on a man having a whole lot of both. Now, women need to know that their femininity is either free or a lot less expensive, as there are poor women all over the world who are still ladylike, and yet you let them talk about trading femininity and the pussy, both of which are not expensive or rare, in exchange for money, which is in far shorter supply in any society to which you go. In other words, beautiful women and feminine women outnumber wealthy men, even middle class men, in any place to which you go. You think those men in Papua New Guinea would listen to some mess like that? They're poor as hell, even poorer than many on the African continent. But they don't let their women tell them, we're going to act like men and screw everyone else but you until you bring home that bag. Now they and the women know they're already poor and will die poor. Poverty's not an excuse for their women to act like Western black women do. Should we try to be financially responsible and look after our wives? Yes, they try to, but the lack of money is not a reason for a woman to get disrespectful. They know that if they go out, the women know if they go out and chase the money like the men, they're not going to automatically catch more than the men. And if they did, it would be because the system is oppressing them just to split up the families in the first place. So they, they would know it's a setup. You guys can talk about self-improvement as an option to try, and many will agree with you. If they can afford a gym membership, it's a good thing to have for your own reasons. If they can expand their business or their department in which they're employed, they should. But for real, though, you tell these guys to improve themselves for those Western broads who already took so many ding that these guys will never be able to get into the same number of vaginas, even with these improvements, you know, just to even things out and be equally yoked when they finally pick one. Work on yourself and your purpose. Well, you still don't understand a lot of times that the issue is the women's preferences, but worse than that is the damn lying even to their own male relatives. These dudes that you call black pill and incel, and those are two different things. 
They oftentimes trusted the women in their families and classrooms, then found out they were lied to outright. And this causes trauma, which is why there are normal men who disown their own mothers when they catch them lying. It's serious trauma. And when these guys don't get any counseling for it, they get stuck in what they call the black pill, which should have been our name for what we call the red pill now. If a so-called black pill guy is incel, or he's not incel but he's just depressed, he can still sexually attract some women. The thing they have in common is their depression from being deceived and no counseling available for that either. Many guys who aren't black pill are just ignoring the fact that their own lady relatives and teachers and lady friends lied to them from childhood about what women want. They don't get depressed because they don't confront the truth, which is that they were lied to. Sometimes you matriarchal mandingos were lucky enough to see the lie early in life or you figured it out later, but you still ignored that you were lied to and you worked on something that draws women despite what they say and it worked, so you good. But before one of these other guys invest in a gym membership or anything else, as far as they know, they have to ask what if that doesn't work. And also you say that they shouldn't self-improve from women. Well, I know that, but you never hear them out to learn what this situation is like and what they just didn't know before. So you don't know that for many of them, their lives are otherwise okay except that part. You're assuming that they're all in their parents' basements playing video games when in reality, they're more likely to not be because those guys in their parents' basements don't expect women to like them. It's guys who got their lives otherwise in order that are the most shocked when these women turn and decide that, frankly, a guy who has less in life but has something ambiguous or shallow was still a better deal. Now, why would they be that upset? Well, it's simple. They were already told that they had to have more substance than just muscles or swag to get and keep abroad. But they saw that someone else didn't have to. So they're seeing the goalposts moved only for them and just for them, and this is why it seems to them that they were genetically selected for the single life. It really looks that way to them. The goalpost is over here. It's 50 yards away from you. You run 50 yards, it's now been moved 100 yards from where you previously were, which is still 50 yards away. You run that, now it's been moved behind you. And you ran out of, out of bounds. That's what it's like for them. You're just too happy with these Western hoes that rack up these high body counts because you get to be one of the few guys that they'll share with each other in order to rack up these body counts. So since your cock is part of the carousel, uh, you're not only straight, you good, but you're dismissive of the fact that most guys, including you, were lied to. And from this, all else went wrong for most men. You really don't care that you're one car wreck fire, layoff, or false accusation from being involuntarily celibate yourself because the real mistake men have made isn't being not manly enough or not alpha enough, but it's being too easy in exchange for too little from little girls we never even demanded grow the hell up into women. I hope that this has been a benefit. Blackheart sign and blackout. Asalaamu Alaikum.